All right, today's topic, why do vacuum tubes become microphonic? I had this conversation with my great uncle Joe a couple years ago. He worked for Tungsol vacuum tubes after World War II. The guy's a 93 year old walking book of knowledge on the topics of tubes and transformers. So we've had quite a few conversations over the years and I'm gonna do my best to share some of that knowledge with you over the next few videos. This particular video is tackling the topic of what causes tubes to become microphonic. I have a real large tube right here just so that we can see what the internal components look like. You have your components all held together by little wires that are spot welded together. It is these spot welds that can break over time as the weak link. And it can happen a couple different ways. One is obviously impact. If you drop your amplifier, that shock can break those things free. Although tubes are designed to be able to handle a certain amount of shock. Uh, especially the older tubes, they're often designed much better to be able to handle things for military applications, for example. So you have your, your JAN, Joint Army Navy um, tubes that can handle quite a bit of shock. And then your modern tubes, well, they're not quite as rugged, so try not to drop your amplifier. But it can happen another way too. Those spot welds can break free from tubes getting very, very hot over time and then cooling. And this constant cycling of on and off can weaken those metal joints. Some amplifiers are designed in such a way that they push the tube to its limits and those tubes get extremely hot. Those are the ones that are gonna be the most likely to go microphonic. So that can happen with power tubes, but also with preamp tubes. Also, certain tubes are more likely to just because of their manufacturing flaws. Sometimes with modern tubes, you'll find that you buy a brand new tube and it's microphonic right out of the box. And that can be for the very simple reason that there's not great quality control check from the factory. And sometimes those spot welds can just break during shipping, just because modern tubes really aren't as rugged as the old tubes used to be. So Uncle Joe proposed a great idea for repairing this microphonic issue in tubes without taking the tube apart. He said, I haven't tried this out, so this is just a theory, but seems like it should work. And what he proposed is the use of an inductive heating coil, one that is very powerful to re-weld those broken weld joints. So when you're manufacturing a vacuum tube, the manufacturer will use these inductive coils to cause the getter to flash. And that is this little silver bit that you'll normally see at the top of a, a tube and preamp tubes especially. And its role is really just to get rid of any residual air that may be inside of the tube. Uh, if it turns white, then you know you've got a bad tube because there's air inside of it. But he's proposing a scaled up version of this inductive heater, one that would make the metal very, very hot to the point where it could re-weld. The device would need to be extremely powerful because you would also risk um, melting the glass just from the heat of the metal inside, so you'd have to do it really quick. I haven't built this yet, it's on my list of things to do, so if anybody dares to try this, uh, definitely let me know what your results are. But hopefully in the future I'll have a video demonstrating this with hopefully some success. Uh, anyway, I uh, appreciate you watching. If you're interested in more things on various topics on uh, audio, music production, and electronics that are related, please subscribe to the channel and have a nice day.